please, I'm inviting you to reclaiming authentic Christianity. Please subscribe and tell others to do. I believe it is a it will be a benefit to every one of us. God bless you as you join the family and as we join it together in Jesus' name. About false conversion among believers in the church. We are talking about false salvation. In fact, the scripture made us to understand that many Christ will come and many false prophets will come at the end of the day. That is Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus Christ was giving us the events of things that will happen at the end of time. And today we want to discuss a little about it, what it means to be a false Christian, what it means to be a false believer, what it means to behold or to hold a false Christianity. And the truth is that many people in the church are really holding false Christianity as faith. I pray that God will help us as we journey together to behold authentic Christianity, to behold something that will make you see the face of God at the end. Because that is our primary purpose, although we also have secondary purposes, why we are in the kingdom of God. Let me read from the book of Matthew chapter 3 from verse 1. He said, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now my emphasis is in verse 1 where he said, repent ye, repent ye. Sorry, my emphasis is in verse 2, where he says, repent ye. Now, if you look at the body of Christ, although I'm not here to criticize, we emphasize more on confession, which is very good. In fact, the gate, the entrance to the gate to the kingdom has to do with confession. You have to confess the lordship of Christ over your life. But then the other aspects of repentance, in fact, the word repentance is becoming an obsolete word, not actually being used in the, in the churches today. There is need for repentance, my brothers. There is need for repentance, my sisters. When you come to the kingdom through confession, in fact, a dead faith, one of the symptoms of a dead faith is that it lacks work. When a faith lacks work, that is dead. So when the Christianity you are holding is all about I was once born again because I make some confessions, is a sign that there is something wrong. You know, we have tons of Christians up and down, born in the church, raised in the church, but yet they are nothing different from somebody being raised in the altar of Shongu. They are nothing being different from somebody raised in the hope of prostitution. And that is why this morning the word is coming unto you. Do you just hold the word of repentance? Do you hold the words? Do you hold the words of just confessing? I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I confess Jesus. Yes, as good as that is, that will not necessarily be enough. There is a point of repentance where you repent and turn away from your evil ways. It's like someone heading a sinner actually is someone heading to hellfire. And then just because you confess Jesus and you are still on the way to hellfire, that does not really change anything. What really matters is when you confess the Lordship of Jesus and then Jesus began to rule over your life. And then you turn, you turn from your old ways, you turn from your prostitution, you turn from your evil ways, and then you focus on heaven. And that is when you now begin to behold, to look on to Jesus. As you look unto him, you become like him. Then you, you, you don't tell me that you are a Christian and then you are still behaving like a devil. There are no devil is permitted in heaven. No matter how confession the devil makes that he is a Christian, he is a Christian, or he believes in Jesus Christ. The scripture made us to understand that the demons and the devils also believe and they tremble. I pray that you will not hold this um, devilish uh, doctrine of Christianity without really having a commitment in Jesus' name. John the Baptist, I'm starting with John the Baptist because uh, he opened a chapter, a door, um, uh, someone preparing the way for the Lord. This is the message he preached. 
In fact, um, Herod even listened to him. But yet, just listening to a preacher or to a message does not necessarily mean that um, it will affect your life. Herod, as we are speaking now, we believe is in hell, roasting in the lakes of fire. Now, I want us to just look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. He said, this is when Jesus Christ have just came out of um, the wilderness of fasting and temptation. And the first message, he said, and he began to preach. From the scriptures now, he said, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Always, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, when you look at how he preaches, you notice that he always carried the word repentance. Repent. There is need for repentance. I'm emphasizing that word because it's becoming an obsolete word in the, in, in the church. Men are now building gods of their own image. Gods, men are becoming gods, a message that only satisfies their own flesh. Now let's look at, as I summarize this episode, let's look at Acts chapter 2. This is immediately after Pentecost, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. He said this is a, a response to their request. Let me start from verse 37. He said, now, after Peter has already preached a message that has touched their heart, that has really strike, it does not really uh, uplift their emotions. No, that is not the aim of the fathers. The aim of the Holy Spirit is to go deep to your conscience, to speak to your spirit man, that you will be transformed and make eternity with God. In verse 37, he said, now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. When was the last time you heard a message that you were pricked in your heart? When was the last time the truth came to you as it is? And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. You see the word again, repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is always need for repentance. It's very, very important. Before you, become, before you say you are a Christian, there must be a transformation. There must be a change in your life. It's not all about in the crusade I raise my hands up. As good as that is, that is not enough. There must be a transformation. You cannot uh, be uh, full of devilish characters. You cannot be full of satanic infested nature and then still be hoping and still be deceiving yourself that um, you are going to heaven. No, it doesn't work like that. So I implore you today to please come into what is true. Come into what will help you. There is no a use of beholding something that does not really count in eternity. And therefore this day, if the Christianity you are beholding is all about something that has to satisfy your emotions, uh, there, is no, there is no time in your life that the word came unto you that you were pricked in your heart. Although you may not necessarily even need to be pricked in your heart, but there is a time when the, uh, there is a conviction in your mind that you are a sinner. You are, you are heading to hellfire. And then the word of God came to you. And then there is need for transformation. After you confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ, there is need for Jesus Christ to be the Lord over your life. Yes, it's not only, it does not end at confession. It also continues as an act where you act under the lordship of jesus when you act under the constitution of heaven which is the bible it doesn't matter any message you hear any message that contradicts the bible any message that contradicts uh, what jesus christ teaches any message that contradicts what the apostles taught is is a demonic uh, paganized uh, message therefore this morning um i really welcome you to this faith and probably you are there you are ahead, you are, maybe you are a worker in your church, maybe you are even a preacher. Uh, maybe you, have, uh, you have, have one title or the other. That is not what we are preaching here. That is not what we are emphasizing here. What we are emphasizing this morning is repentance, the importance of repentance and turning away from your sins. So probably you are there, you are not born again. Maybe you are still um, full of with the nature of satan and then you don't know how to get free from it today there is freedom in christ today you can come 
after you've made the confession as i will be leading you to that um prayer of faith and then we teach you as you journey with us how to build up in doctrine and in the word of god i pray that god will help you in the name of jesus probably you are there you are not yet saved probably you are a church member probably you are a worker probably you are even a pastor listening to me it doesn't matter your soul is what i'm very very much interested in probably you are even famous that does not really matter now what really matters now is that are you saved you must be saved before you are safe are you safe if death should come by adventure it happens now are you safe will god be pleased to see you and if the answers to all these questions is a capital no please i employ you you can just as we've been taught confess the lordship of christ over your life probably you find a good bible based church you attend and then you read the scriptures i will recommend you start from the book of john and then you begin to ask god for the renewal because you have to read the scriptures and then the scriptures impart you and help you in renewing your mind that is very necessary your culture must change i hear christians saying that they are christians but then they still hold on to a culture, a satanic and demonic culture inspired by Satan. No. Christianity has its own culture. Yes, Christianity has its own culture. And your culture, in whatsoever point, it contradicts the culture of Christianity, the culture of heaven. Your culture must bow to it. So this morning, God bless you. And I hope that this message has really spoken to you. Thank you very much. And I hope seeing you again in this channel. In my next video, I will really be emphasizing on our sexual purity. And uh, we will be taking our emphasis from Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. So please, I want you to remain tuned to this uh, channel as we release God-inspiring and nourishing uh, materials. God bless you. Thank you very much. My name is Brother Milala Oluwatun, and I invite you to this wonderful YouTube channel. Um, it's a period that I will really appreciate if you subscribe and you join us in this community of believers, young people vibrant for God, that really want to see Christ glorified in our generation. So this um, YouTube channel is um, uh, reclaiming authentic Christianity, and our aim and our purpose is to see that true Christianity prevail over all sort of paganized Christianity around the world today. This is a channel where you actually listen to the truth and nothing but the truth. And we have a lot of series of programs in which uh, will be very educating and will be mind-blowing for any person that have the interest of the gospel as it is in the scripture. So I welcome you to this journey as we take a lifetime journey together. God bless you once again. Please invite your friends and your families. Thank you very much.